Mr. Jeffrey Osborne. And now, the starting lineup for the Eastern Conference champions, the Orlando Magic. At one guard, number 11, 6'5", a rookie from Western Kentucky University, Courtney Lee. The other guard, number one, 6'2", 10th campaign from Fresno State, Rafer Alston. At one forward, number 15, 6'10", ninth season out of Turkey, Hidu Turgalu. The other forward, number nine, 6'10", 11th year from Elite Elsick High School, Rashard Lewis. And at center, number 12, 6'11", fifth year from Southwest Atlantic Christian Academy, Dwight Howard. The head coach in his fifth year, Stan Van Gundy. And now, on your feet, time to greet the home team. The franchise with 14 NBA titles, the most wins in NBA history, the Western Conference champions, your Los Angeles Lakers. And one forward number three, six, eight, fifth year out of UCLA, Trevor Ariza. The other four, number 16, seven feet, eighth campaign from Spain, Pau Gasol. <laughs> Starting at center, number 17, seven feet, fourth year from St. Joseph's High School, Andrew Bynum. <laughs> at one guard, number two, six one, 13th year out of Arkansas, Little Rock, Derek Fisher. And the other guard is number 24, 6'6", six, six, 13th season out of Laura Marion High School, Kobe Bryant. The head coach in his 18th year, Hall of Famer, Bill Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, game one starts now. of champions awaits.
boxers and they get inside. I want to tell you something. Somebody up there is on our side. Los Angeles Lakers, one of the most storied franchises in all of sports, led by one of the most dynamic players this game has ever seen. Kobe Bryant and the Lakers back on the final stage for the second consecutive year. Facing off against an Orlando Magic team. Yes, a surprise to many being here on this stage. Once again, featuring a charismatic, physically imposing 23-year-old center on the final stage for the first time in 14 years. It's the Lakers and the Magic ready to battle for an NBA championship. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to game one of the 2009 NBA Finals. For the Lakers, they've waited a whole year to get back here. Last year, you remember, their season ended in embarrassment, a 39-point loss in game six to Boston. They vowed to be much tougher and much better, and they have been, and they feel they're ready to finish it off this year of course, led by Kobe Bryant and head coach Phil Jackson looking for his NBA record 10th championship as a coach. He's currently tied with the late Red Auerbach. Meanwhile, for the Orlando Magic, back in training camp, no one expected this team to be here. They had devastating injuries during the course of the regular season, crushing defeats in the playoffs, but nothing seemed to stop them, and they keep getting better and better, led by a fiery, energetic head coach in Stan Van Gundy in his first NBA Finals appearance. And that's where we will bring in our two analysts, Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson. Hello, everyone. Again, welcome to game one. And let's start right off the bat. Stan is your brother, and there's been a lot read and talked about last couple of days how uncomfortable that makes you. That makes Mark and I very happy. But I know it's, you've got an interesting dynamic coming into this game. How do you feel? Well, I feel really immense pride in what Stan's been able to accomplish, and I'm really hoping for the best for him in this series. For him to attain his goal, what do the Magic need to do? Well, I think two things. Dwight Howard's got to dominate the paint at both ends, and the great equalizer for any team that's an underdog is a three-point shot. Dwight Howard had a dominant series. 70% free throw shooting is important because that means the Magic can go to him. 40 points, 14 rebounds in game six. And then the three ball for the Magic is so important. You see the first two rounds didn't shoot it well against the Cavaliers. They knocked it in, led by their two forwards, Turkoglu and Richard Lewis. Meanwhile for the Lakers, as mentioned, coach by Phil Jackson. Now, fortunately, there's no relation, so no bias from you. But for the Lakers to finish off what they feel is theirs what do they have to do in this series well no question about it it starts and ends with Kobe Bryant the best player in this series no question about it you take a look at what he has done throughout the course of the playoffs he's at his best when he's shooting a high percentage also the results are in wins getting it done he's going to score regardless it's about quality versus quantity but this team is exceptional when they get the big guys doing the job in games five and six of the Western Conference Finals it was Gasol and Odom who stepped up and helped Brian. So it's the Lakers and the Orlando Magic. Game one, best of seven, 2000 NBA Finals. Tip off coming up next. Spanish language version of tonight's game presented by ESPN Deportes. Use the SAP button on your television as we're set to go for game one of the 2009 NBA Finals. Ray Austin and the Magic will bring it up. These two teams, it's been long seasons and some struggles in their playoffs to get here. But they are the two best teams in the NBA. As Hito Turkoglu looks for Dwight Howard. Howard spinning against Andrew Bynum. Puts it up. Bank shot won't go. Bynum the rebound. And during the regular season, the Magic won both games. They haven't played since January. Jeff, is anything to take from those two games in the regular season? Well, I think, obviously, with Jameer Nelson being out, for the rest of the season, he was their leading scorer. You know, that's a big factor, but the pick and roll has given LA problems, and the Magic are a pick and roll team. They're a tough matchup for a lot of teams. Foul on the entry pass, that basket won't count. They certainly were a tough matchup for the Cleveland Cavs. 
Meanwhile, Mark, the finals are a different stage than the playoffs. Even the conference finals, you played in one. Jeff, of course, you coached in one. What's the difference in terms of the finals and how you're feeling when you go on the floor? As far as the stage, I remember playing for Larry Bird, the Hall of Fame player, the head coach of the Pacers. He said, this is going to be a different ball game getting to the finals. And he told the truth as Gasol hands it off the box. And Bynum such a big key. Gasol and Bynum, when the Laker big men play well, they're a tough team to beat. And there's Rashard Lewis, who has been just superb in these playoffs. Lewis lost it and then got fouled. Derek Fisher with the hit. Well, both power forwards have mismatches. Gasol going at Rashard Lewis, that's a mismatch. Good pass by Gasol, good finish. And then Rashard Lewis has the advantage at the other end as he drove it by Gasol. And it's very interesting. I would take the mismatch of Gasol on the offensive end because Gasol could be quicker defensively getting out to contest shots of Rashard Lewis. Rashard Lewis can't be stronger or bigger. Austin gets in, kicks it out. Vito Turkoglu knocks down the three. And they have been a terrific three-point shooting team. The power of the three so evident with these Orlando Magic throughout the playoffs. Well, it's the great equalizer for a prohibitive underdog. So if you can shoot the three and guard the three well, it'll keep you in some games. Andrew Bynum starts off strong. Bynum, of course, had the knee surgery and missed a good part of the season. Has come back and has been very rusty in the playoffs, inconsistent, but a good start as Rafer Austin beats Derek Fisher off the dribble. That's a good job by Rafer Austin. He's going to have to make Derek Fisher and the guards of the Lakers defend. Gasol stripped by Austin. And Orlando forces the turnover. Orlando, though, so much more than just the three-point shooting team and Dwight Howard. They've become one of the better defensive teams in the NBA. Howard across the lane, left-handed throws it in. And that's where he's improved his offensive game, Mark. Well, it certainly has improved feels much more comfortable and confident on the low block. Give credit to Patrick Ewan, the Hall of Fame center. Does a great job of tutoring Dwight Howard. Kobe Bryant rattles it in. Both teams shooting well to start. Lakers have hit their first three. Magic three for four. Both teams coming off impressive game six clinches in their conference finals. Orlando knocking out LeBron James and the Cavs. And the Lakers being a tough Nuggets team as Gasol gets the rebound. No need for Ray for Austin to shoot a floater there. He could have gone in and shot a layup. Kobe Bryant against the rookie, Courtney Lee. An impressive rookie, but not an easy assignment in your first finals. And he picks up a quick foul. You could, you could see right away the Lakers looking to go at Courtney Lee. They're putting the ball in the hands of Bryant. Isolations also post up, so they're trying to take advantage of that matchup. Courtney Lee, the rookie out of Western Kentucky, their first-round pick, played four years of college. He has played so well, so impressive. Does a good job defending there, although Bryant thought he got hit. And that's one of the keys when you're defending Bryant is just don't foul it. Ray for Austin's had some big games. Misses. Bang on the rebound. Austin was the player they acquired when they lost Jameer Nelson to that shoulder injury that Jeff mentioned. Bryant kicks it out, but Nelson is suited up, and we expect him to be the first guard off the bench. That's the... Very latest word that we've received. And that's such an important facet of Orlando. It'll be interesting to see how it works out. He injured it back on February 3rd, had surgery. They didn't think he'd be back. He's two months ahead of schedule as Fisher gets inside, misses, and second opportunity puts it in. Already had four lead changes. It'll be interesting to see. We know Nelson's talented, but he hasn't played in four months. And I'm sure people say, why bring them back? Well, this is a team that made it to the finals, but Jameer Nelson gives them an extra weapon as Turkoglu, exceptional drive getting to the cup. He gives them a weapon that, that goes right to the weakness of the Lakers, pick and roll and a scoring point guard. If he can't be effective in this series, they can't win the series. So to me, it's a no-brainer. Bynum off to a strong start. Six points, three rebounds for Bynum. And the Lakers up by one. Lewis, good ball movement. Keeping Bynum in the game, the guard Howard, so important for the Lakers. Howard goes right at him, draws the foul. Bynum's been getting in some foul difficulty, but he's off to a good start as he picks up his first. Well, this is a perfect matchup for Andrew Bynum. On the defensive end, be long and then rebound in the basketball. Use that size and then attack the body of Dwight Howard. Defensively, you can't let him off the hook. You got to stay in front of him, contain, and force him to shoot over. That time, careless foul by Bynum. 
What a season it's been for this young man, Dwight Howard at 23 years old, first team All-NBA, Defensive Player of the Year. Led the league in block shots, led the league in rebounding. And it just keeps getting better and better. Capped it off with a 40-point performance in the game six clincher against Cleveland. Stan Van Gundy saying, I don't know what more he could have done for our team that night. And to me, a big part of this series is going to come down to this. Howard is going to get to the free throw line. It's going to be make or miss. If he can make him like he did against Cleveland, they have a good chance of staying in games. If he can't, that means they can't go to him as much. Then they become strictly a perimeter team, and it's a more difficult task. 59% from the line during the regular season, but hit 70% in that Cleveland series as Bryant off to a good start with his second field goal. And both teams shooting well early. The Magic, a very good road team during the regular season, 27 and 14. And also a terrific road team during the playoffs. Remember, they gained one game one in Boston and game seven in Boston. Also one game one in Cleveland. So they've had some impressive victories on the road. Well, there's no secret. This is a pick and roll jump shooting team. They knock down shots. It does not matter where they're playing the game. They can win anyway. And Turkaloo is one who's played actually better on the road as he knocks it down. Turkaloo, kind of a Lamar Odom type. When he plays at a high level, the Magic are a tough team to beat. Think about it. He got the opportunity when Grant Hill left via free agency. It's the first time he was going to be a featured part of any offense. Brian, quick move, blocked by Howard, but he hit it off the backboard. It was close. They call it a goaltender. And the question is, if you stand Van Gundy as Dwight Howard helped defense, certainly got to the glass first, and then Howard blocked it, that's a goaltender. When do you go to Petras to defend Kobe Bryant? Not that he can stop him, but he has a better chance of containing him. Michael Petras coming off the bench. He was terrific in the Cleveland series. Howard across the lane, misses. Ball batted away out of bounds, and it's Laker ball. Petrus from France in his first year with Orlando hit some big shots and played some pretty tough defense on LeBron James That might sound silly considering the numbers he put up, but he did a good job Gasol tough matchup for Lewis down this end Gasol rushed it Turkaloo and Ariza, also a fun matchup. Ariza's been one of the surprising stars of this postseason. Turkaloo off the dribble. Can't get it to go. And Bynum looks very active, Mark. Well, this is a great matchup for him. You know, talking to Dwight Howard, he said Kendrick Perkins of the Celtics was his toughest matchup. Well, certainly Andrew Bynum can do similar things. Pretty shot from Bryant. Can't get it to go down. And here's Courtney Lee. He is fearless going to the basket. Misses it, gets his own rebound, puts it back up and in. And to me, this is the biggest factor when you spread the floor with four shooters, is can you rebound well enough at either end? And they've struggled to rebound the ball when it's not Dwight Howard. So everybody's got to chip in for the Magic to keep it even against a very good Laker rebounding team. All tied up. We played six and a half minutes. Howard reaching in. Bynum spins away. Blocked by Howard, but a foul. And that'll be the first foul on Dwight Howard. And we'll have our first timeout. Well, Hito Turkaloo has got a lot of skill. Here, running the pick and roll, drives away, uses the rim for protection. Good finish. And then again, six foot ten, gets separation. Six lead changes already in three ties. Last series was all about LeBron James. Even when we beat him, it was about how LeBron reacted after the game. That's all that mattered, right? That's all that mattered. It was all about LeBron. This series is all about Kobe. Okay, it's all about Kobe. So look, they don't have to give you any respect. The media, the fans, nothing. But the thing they can't take away from you is winning games. Hey, great start, great game. All right, let's get this thing off on the right foot right here. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Dominate. One, two, three. Dominate. Dominate. They have gotten off on the right foot, tied at 14. What a job Stan Van Gundy's done in just his second year. They won 52 games in his first year, 59 this year, the number three seed. And a team, as we said, knocked off the defending champion Celtics and then beat LeBron James and the Cavs. Not many people expected that. Everybody had LeBron against Kobe in the finals, but 
And Gundy and the Magic had different ideas, and they just seemed to get better and better as the playoffs have gone on. Well, he does an outstanding job of coaching his team, sending messages, motivating. I tell you what, I would purchase the Wired with Stan Van Gundy. <laughs> I'm telling you, if this coaching stuff doesn't work out, reality TV. <laughs> What is that, John and Kate plus eight? <laughs> they're gonna have a uh, they're gonna have a run for their money. Has he ever worn a tie? Yeah, he used to wear ties. I think he wore one to start his first game with the Magic, and then he went with that look. Hey, when you look like us, there's no good look. <laughs> Lakers by two. Tony Petit has checked in early. And Michael Petrus as well. And they're going to the bench. There's Petit, a good veteran with some playoff experience, and a loose ball foul is gonna go against the Lakers. Howard fighting for the rebound. I think they're going to call it on Gasol. And that will be his first. See, when Orlando plays bigger, like with Petit, they can't spread the floor more so they can help on Howard. But they have a better chance defensively. So it, it's really going to be a game of foul trouble. Gasol, Lewis, Howard, who gets in foul trouble first? Both teams have good players, good benches, but sometimes it really messes up the matchups. Preventing Ozut on the floor. As Austin, again, penetration. Good job getting inside, finding Turkoglu. Brian on Turkoglu. You know, Turkoglu, nice shuffle pass to Petit. And that's the pressure that they put on your defense. Constant penetration, looking to make plays for somebody else. That time, Austin to Turkoglu to Petit. Petit had two very good regular season games against the Lakers. Gasol again, a little quick on his shot. This is that one. And we're still tied with four and a half remaining here in the first. Both teams shooting 50% from the field to start. Here's Petrus. He was red hot from downtown in the Cleveland series. Pulls up. Off the mark. It'll be interesting to see as Lamar Odom about to come into the ball game. Does Stan Van Gundy get Rashad Lewis back in the game to downside? Bryant, the offensive rebound. Petrus trying to hound Bryant back up to Fisher. Can Fisher get going with his jumper? He's been off the mark so far in the playoffs, but he is a big time clutch performer. Knocks down that one. I like that. He's a knockdown shooter, but he's a guy that don't fall in love with the three. That time his shot fake gets a better shot. See how they're really laying off Tony Petit. And Petit misses that one. Kind of daring him to shoot, but that's a shot that the Lakers will give him all series long. Gasol spots up. Kyle Gasol's had another terrific year. All NBA third teams had some huge games in the playoffs, especially games five and six in the Denver series. Again, Gasol really laying off. Goes down a double team and a reach in foul. And Bynum and Gasol both upset. The foul's going to go against Bynum. And that's two on Bynum. So he'll go to the bench. Shows you the many facets of Gasol's game. Can post, can put the ball on the floor, can lead the break, can knock down the top of the key jump shot. Has it all. This is when the Lakers are most dangerous when he's aggressive on the offensive end. All right, now with Bynum on the bench, Odom comes in. Gasol most likely to guard Howard. Talk about different guys to guard for Gasol, either Rashard Lewis or Dwight Howard. A very difficult defensive challenge for Kyle Gasol in this series as Howard hits another free throw. He's basically going to be challenged all 48 minutes, whether he's guarding Rashard Lewis or Dwight Howard. Hey, Gasol, when Tony Petit comes in the game, says, thank you. <laughs> at, least I, at least I'm not under siege for every possession. Meanwhile, Odom, who is at the table, ready to come in when Bynum picked up that second foul, he finally gets in. He is the definition of the X-Factor, as we've said over and over again. When Lamar Odom plays at the top of his game, you can't beat the Lakers. Very interesting that they're putting Dwight Howard on Lamar Odom and Petit on Gasol because of Howard already having one foul. Petit blocks that shot. Ariza fouling Turkoglu, who throws it up as soon as he felt the contact. Smart play from Turkoglu. And he's going to go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. Just under three remaining. First quarter of game one. Pretty close early on. Back at the Staples Center, the celebrities out full force. Maria Shriver enjoying her popcorn. 
course, this year, Bill Russell, the NBA Finals trophy. David Stern sitting right in front with Adam Silver. And, of course, in his usual seat, Jack is here. And fired up early, was already getting into the ear of Dwight Howard in the pregame. Meanwhile, for the first time tonight, let's check in with Doris Burke. Hey, Doris. Hey, Mike. Well, the Orlando Magic had three primary concerns as it pertains to Jameer Nelson's return. They all had to do, obviously, with his physical health, both in the short term and in the long term. One, his strength. Where was he at physically? The worst case scenario, if he re-injured himself, was a four to six month rehabilitation. They were okay with that. The second was conditioning. They put him through about a week ago games of four on four. He was able to absorb some contact. No issues there. The third was endurance. Now, he practiced Tuesday and Wednesday, looked a heck of a lot better yesterday, so they were much more confident. As far as Stan Van Gundy was concerned, he said, listen, this is not about making the easiest decision. It's about what's best for the team. He will not be on a short leash once he enters the basketball game. And I guess, Mark and Jeff, the question becomes, you know, what are the challenges for Jameer, for the team, and the coaching staff with him as he gets set to return after a four-month absence? This is him warming up, guys. He's missed 40, uh, four months, and you saw the number of games as well. Well, for me, there's no middle ground. As a coach, Stan Van Gundy, and as an organization, the Orlando Magic, make sure that he's ready to play. This is not a token appearance. This is for all the marbles. If he's going to play, then you play him like he's Jameer Nelson. The advantage is he brings certain things to the table that Anthony Johnson and Rafa Austin do not. He made his first All-Star team prior to the injury. He was second in the NBA in three-point shooting. Nice pass. Luke Walton removes the ball so well, sets up Gasol. One thing I'm impressed with, Coach, and we touched on it, the versatility of both of these teams. They become different teams as, as they go to their bench. Howard, offensive foul. Two fouls on Howard, two fouls on Bynum as Martin Gortat will come in. And, and this is the game right here, foul trouble. Howard picks up his second before Gasol picks up his second. Good moving of the feet by Gasol. I think that's a good call. You're the only Van Gundy to think so here in the building. Although, that's not a, much of an argument from him. Yeah, but that's a good call. But you have to look back a couple of minutes ago when Dwight Howard picks up a cheap one against Andrew Bynum on the block. You can't pick up that one and he'd still be playing. You got to be smarter defensively. So Howard will sit. Gortat has played very well off the bench. In fact, he had an unbelievable game in the first round when Howard was suspended for the game six clincher in Philadelphia. They don't lose much defensively, believe it or not, as Gasol misses and Turkaloo the rebound. And the danger, Coach, is you, you look and you see Dwight Howard on the bench and you're the Lakers, you think, oh, okay, it's easy now. It's just a setup. This is a dangerous team, the Orlando Magic, that's capable of going on runs. Well, you think about it, game six at Philadelphia, to close that series out, Dwight Howard suspended. Magic won by 25. I mean, this is a team, Gortat is underrated as a backup you don't know his name he's from poland the whole thing guy's a very good backup center he played in the d league played three years of pole ball in germany this is his second year in the nba as jeff said for poland a second round pick who this year has come alive he's going to be a free agent there'll be a lot of people interested in him pass deflected by bryant somehow gets it to peaches who fires away had to shoot it with the shot clock expiring and a new 24 thanks to lewis Lewis trying to post up Odom a little too physical on the defense. And the Lakers in the penalty. So free throws for Rashard Lewis. And to me, that's a bad foul by Lamar Odom. He has the ability to guard Rashard Lewis one on one because he's got exceptional lateral quickness and great length. No need in the penalty to foul him before he has the ball. And Rashard Lewis getting his first NBA Finals appearance. Lewis, an all star this year from Houston, Texas, came right from high school to the NBA. His first nine years with Seattle, he was a second-round pick of the Sonics, he developed into a high scorer with Seattle, then signed that huge contract, $118 million to come to Orlando. This is his second year, and he has blossomed in his second year, especially in the playoffs. So many big shots. And Stan Van Gundy says he plays his best games when it's the biggest games. Well, think about the two three-pointers he made against the Cleveland. Cavaliers you know everybody's talking about what Cleveland didn't do that series is in the balance two big threes by him changed the course of that series Gasol nice defense from Gortat Gasol gets it back stripped by Turkaloo good hands from Orlando second turnover for LA Austin back pass Gortat couldn't handle it 
But they say deflected by the Lakers, uh, is Danny Crawford. And it's still Orlando Ball, 19 on the shot clock. Coming up on a minute remaining here in the first. Not really much of a feeling out process. They're going at each other pretty good. Turkaloo, line drive. Bryant on the pull-up, hand in his face, or tap the rebound. And to me, this is a different Kobe Bryant than we saw at the end of the Denver series. Right now, he's shooting a lot of shots. Good drive by Ray for Alston. I think Pietrus's size, it's not going to stop him, obviously, but it at least can give him more of a challenge. Ray for Alston, his second field goal. We've already had seven lead changes here in the first quarter. Jordan Farmar just off the bench, way long. And Gortat quickly with another rebound. Turkaloo guarded by Luke Walt. Both teams have gone to their benches early. Petrus flips it up, won't go. Odom fighting for the rebound. And the Lakers will hold it for the final shot of the period. I thought the Magic rushed that offensive trip. Eat clock instead of forcing up a quick. Laker crowd getting on its feet. Bryant the drive, spin up and under, won't go. And that will end the first quarter. Kobe Bryant. Three of nine from the field. Meanwhile, Howard picked up two quick fouls, as did Andrew Bynum. So foul trouble, one of the stories here in the opening period. Leading score, Hito Turkoglu, he had nine. First quarter complete, Magic by two. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Welcome back to Los Angeles with Stan Van Gundy. In your pregame speech, you talked about getting off to a good start. What did you like in that first period? Well, I thought we did some good things in terms of moving the ball. I thought our defense early on was not very good at all. We got a little bit better as time went on in the quarter. Dwight with those two early fouls, what do you want from Gortat? Well, Gortat's a good defender, good rebounder. He'll, he'll do a good job. We don't have a problem playing with him. Coach, thank you. Mike. Okay. All right, Doris, Stan Van Gundy. And the Orlando Magic 59 wins during the regular season. Then in the playoffs, they actually lost their first game at home against Philadelphia. We're down 2-1 to one in the series, but defeated the Sixers. Then against the Celtics, had to win on the road in Game 7. And then also in the conference finals. Meanwhile, the Jazz took care of business for the Lakers. The Rockets, a tough seven-game series. The Nuggets gave them a battle, but they were maybe their two best performances of the postseason in Games 5 and 6. To advance to the finals as Jameer Nelson is in. Again, has not played since February the 3rd when he injured that shoulder. But he's been working out. And the all-star guard, you know he has been dying to get back on the floor. And Mike, he does not shy away from contact as Odom knocks in a jump shot. He's a physical guard. It'll be interesting to see that it was on it, the injury was to his shooting shoulder. Will he have the same range of motion as he did prior to the surgery? And each year he's gotten a little bit better and blossomed this year. As you mentioned, second in three-point shooting. He's a better three-point shooter than Ray Ralston, not as good a defender. And there's a whistle away from the ball. It's going to go against Sasha Bujicic. This was against the Dallas Mavericks. It didn't really look like much. And all of a sudden, he went for it right away, that right shoulder. He obviously recovers well. They say he's two months ahead of schedule and what's been fun to watch he has been the number one cheerleader of the magic during the course of these playoffs he's really been supportive nice pass inside the door top and that's why he's so well liked by his team it's not going to upset anybody in terms of playing time right and i love what otis smith said to him don't take their success as a knock on what you know you weren't a part of you know be happy relish in it and understand that they would be able to have the same success with you. Bujicic taken away by Gortat. He's been a good presence out there. There's Courtney Lee. Lee off the dribble. Gortat the rebound, throws it back out. That's a three. Rashard Lewis, who led the NBA in the regular season in three-pointers, gives the Magic a five-point lead. I like what Nelson is doing, allowing the game to come to him. Two assists, making plays. This offense just have, they have a different bounce when he's running the show. Walton can't go. Odom right there on the foul. Four points for Odom off the bench. And that's where L.A.'s vastly, you know, people talk about Kobe and Gasol, but what they are, they are hard to block out. They are long, 
and they are a very good rebounding team. How about this start for Jameer Nelson? Terrific off the bench so far. A couple of assists. Hits his first shot with that mouth guard hanging out of his mouth. That reminds me of B.J. Armstrong with the Bulls. Always wanted to rip that out of his mouth. <laughs> Walton puts it in. That, of course, when you were coaching the Knicks. Dude. Yeah. You had nothing specific against B.J. No, no, it's just always losing that bothered me. <laughs> Nelson kicks it out. Courtney Lee for three. Look at Gartek battling in there. This Orlando Magic team, so resilient. They are not discouraged by the result of any one game or any one stretch. Nelson feeding Lewis. Lewis on the drive. Crowd wanted to travel. Lewis won't get it to go. Gets another offensive rebound. And Nelson calls out a play. And Nelson barely six feet tall. Vujicic is on Lewis. Big height advantage there for Orlando. They're going to try and get it to him. Well, they switch the pick and roll, and that puts him in rotation. Good ball movement by the Magic. Beatrice misses by about three feet. There's the definition of an air ball. 0 for 4 for Beatrice. Perhaps a little hyped up playing in his first NBA Finals. Gasol pumped away by Lee. What a find this was. Courtney Lee drives, kicks it out. Nelson inside pass to Lee. Pretty playing Jameer Nelson. What a spark off the bench. Three assists in three minutes. And yeah, Phil Jackson wants timeout. Four months of inactivity. Nothing but rehab from surgery on his right shoulder. Jameer Nelson comes off the bench with a real spark. Well, I'm a wrestling fan, so I remember the full Nelson hole. That's what Jameer Nelson is doing offensively, looking to be aggressive. It's not about his scoring. It's about his facilitating, making plays into the thick of the Lakers' defense. Outstanding job. The right decision time and time again. It starts with Jameer Nelson. Welcome back, young fella. Throughout the league, doing all that where caring happens. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. New Fuel Max tires get you there on less gas. With three and a half gone by here in the second quarter. Magic leading by five. The finals will continue on Sunday back here at the Staples Center. Earlier start. Coverage against 7.30 Eastern. Tip-off shortly after 8. Then it heads to Orlando for games three, four, and five. Luke Walton gets inside and dumps it in. And that's where Courtney Lee's lack of size hurts them. They want Beatrice on Bryant. Luke Walton's a pretty good post-up player, especially against the size of Lee. Farmar putting some pressure. If Nelson plays, Farmar's going to see more action. And as Lee drives hard to the glass, deflected by Odom. Only the second turnover for Orlando. Kobe Bryant, foul, that shot won't count. So the Lakers will take it out as Beatrice picks up his first. And one thing I would do if I was Jordan Farmer, I would attempt to pick up Jameer Nelson full court. Not to try to, to, to strip him of the basketball, just to put pressure on him. There's no way you're in basketball condition taking this much time off. Nice pass inside, Bynum stops, blocked by Gortat. Terrific defensive play. Martin Gortat off the bench for Howard. He's done an excellent job. Lewis for three. Bryant tips it to Farmer. Lakers throughout the postseason have been playing a number of point guards. Farmer, Vujicic, of course, Derek Fisher, Shannon Brown. Bynum left-handed, won't go. Gortat has four rebounds and two block shots. He's a free agent at the end of the year. He's making himself some money right now. Drives inside. He got hit that time. Bynum close to picking up his third foul there. They let it go. They've been letting him play here early. Nice entry pass. Luke Long off the bench with six points. And you see right away the Lakers looking to go at whoever, whoever Courtney Lee is defending. That's the second straight time Luke Walt on the post. Howard's going to come back in. Nelson throws it out. Beatrice trying to get it going. Off the dribble. Beatrice 0 for 5 from the field.
Bryant gets inside. Tough shot. Gets it to go. He's hollering for a foul. And as Mark said, they are picking on Courtney Lee right now. And a timeout called by Orlando. And the Lakers get a standing ovation. Kobe Bryant, 4 of 10 from the field. Well, again, this is just simple basketball. Size advantage, Bryant in the post, over Courtney Lee in the help defense. Lakers, 6-0 run. Michael Jackson likes it. <laughs> this is gracious. Hands low. Hands low. Back in Los Angeles, Lakers hoping to have that trophy by the end of this series here. Game one at the Staples Center. All started last year. They were in the finals against the Celtics and got obliterated. One of the worst losses in finals history. Beat by 39 at the new Boston Garden, walking off the floor with green confetti falling on top of them as the Celtics celebrated such a disappointing loss. They were questioning about their toughness. We asked Kobe Bryant, are they different this year? We're a tougher team. Much tougher team. Tougher mentally, tougher physically. I mean, we're, um, you know, the, the, the series that we've had with Utah, Houston, and Denver, those are three very physical teams, tough teams. And, um, you know, we had to overcome adversity, and uh, it's particularly in that Houston and Denver series, and we managed to do that. Well, last year they only lost three games in the Western Conference playoffs prior to the finals. This year they lost six. Had some real tough battles, but they seem to win and play impressively in every game they had to have. As Lewis gets in and misses, Howard tips it, Walton tips it away. And I think Richard Lewis, instead of pulling up, has to go right to the rim. There's no one stopping him because they're attached to Dwight Howard. Bryant tripped up as he went for it. Second foul on Michael Petrus. So, Mark, Magic down one. You really have to wonder about Stan Van Gundy's substitution patterns and some of the use of his timeouts, don't you think? Uh, just doing a bad job of picking and choosing the spots, when to make the right decisions. Hey, you guys sound like some of the other national media now. <laughs> Kobe Bryant knocks down the jumper. Yeah, the, look, the funny thing, this is the first time that a Jackson has outdueled a Van Gundy on ESPN. I even see. <laughs> Eight straight points now by the Lakers. And it may not be the last either. <laughs> Nelson wide open. Can't get it to go. Lakers doing a good job on the boards. Plus five right now. Both coaches will tell you that is so huge. And a foul on the entry pass. It's going to go against Lewis. They're not in the penalty yet. Two on Lewis. Oh, but Kobe Bryant so good at making plays. Pick and roll. Does a good job of keeping the defender on his back and then exploding for the jump shot. Right now, Stan Van Gundy's upset because his defenders are on the wrong side of the offensive guys of the Lakers. Bryant features right on top of him. He throws it down. Mark, you saw Kobe Bryant yesterday. He is as serious as we've seen him all season right now. So you take a look at Kobe Bryant certain times. He just has that look. And right now, he understands it's business time. Short answers, no smiles. He wants that NBA championship. Well, off another pick and roll. Good contest by Pietras. 10-0 run by the Lakers. Kobe, the last six. Stay tuned for the finals player of the game vote presented by T-Mobile during the second half of tonight's game. Right now, 5.15 remaining second quarter. After leading by five, Magic now trail by five, a 10-0 run. They've missed eight of their last nine from the field, now shooting 36%. Howard goes right at Bynum, inside, short. Petrus keeps it alive, so does Howard, and Bynum comes out with it. But the length of the Lakers right there coming from help really discouraged Howard on that running hook. Bryant takes it away from Turkoglu after he grabbed the rebound. His pass deflected. And Fisher sets it up. Petrus already picking up a couple of quick fouls on Bryant. Bryant drives, puts it up, misses it, find him right there. Goes back up, blocked from behind by Lewis. And Nelson comes away. They're letting him play here early. As Turkoglu sets up. And I don't 
think the Magic should try to overdo finding Howard. They've got to keep playing in pick and roll and transition without letting the Lakers link set in their half-court defense. That's three fouls on Bynum. So Gasol will re-enter. And just a bad foul. If you're Andrew Bonham, your job is to stay in between Dwight Howard and the basket. Good move by Howard. Find him to slap down. Make him make a tough shot over a contested hand of a seven-footer. That's bad defense, but the luxury that Phil Jackson has, he goes to power the soul. Howard took more free throws than anybody in the NBA this year. But again, he shot 59% as Bynum will sit down for the rest of the half. He has improved. It's something he works on frequently during the season. Howard goes at night to the practice facility in Orlando with a couple of childhood buddies who rebound for him. And he has improved. Something that he's going to need to because he just goes to the line time and time again with that strength. You know, one thing I like, I like Stan Van Gundy playing to me and Nelson start his minutes. If you're going to play him, play him start his minutes because he gives this Orlando Magic team once again a different dimension. He's your best chance at defeating the Lakers. Not just one game, but you got to win four. Fisher for three. That's good. Derek Fisher's found the mark early. Three for four. Now with four minutes remaining, second quarter game one of the NBA Finals. The Lakers trailing by five early. Now with a seven-point advantage. Good balance scoring led by Kobe Bryant with 12. Now a double team gets away and draws another foul. And it's going to be on Gasol. That's two on foul Gasol. And those are fouls as a coach you are upset about. The double team, you can't allow him to spin away from it. It's a miss assignment, poor defense by Pau Gasol. Well, here, Pau Gasol's got to force him into the double team. And again, sometimes when you're as valuable as Pau Gasol is, you have to back off and not take a foul there, particularly in the first half. You can't be going Bynum and Gasol on the bench where your team then has to really downsize. Especially with Bynum with the three fouls. They have DJ Bengal who might see some minutes because of foul problems. Another seven-footer sitting on the bench. Bengal right next to Bynum there. Howard's already taken eight free throws, and he's six for eight. You know, but as a defense, you can't allow him to attack the rim. Your job is to force him to go to the line, but it's the right fouls that you take. Kobe Bryant. Deflected by Nelson. Brian gets it right back. Falling away. Tough shot. Puts it in. Oh, what a shot from Coley Bryan. See, you should be in timeout right away. You make a shot like that, you have to go to the sideline for a couple <laughs> minutes. I, I tell you what. He dream shake, and then he hit against a very good defender in Petrus. Petrus finally gets one to go. Missed his first five from the field. Michael Petrus, first five years in the league with Golden State. The big free agent signing for Orlando. Did not have a great regular season. He was injured a good part of it. As Bryant pulls up again. Kobe Bryant with 16. Now, if you're the Magic's defense, you have to have a Shane Battier mentality. You have to stay the course. Don't get frustrated. Make them work. Kirkaloo thought he felt contact, so he threw it up. Instead, threw an air ball. And yeah, we'll have a timeout. Brian having a big second quarter. A little dream shake right there. Great contest by Beatrice. Better offense by Brian. This guy, you put him in pick and roll with Gasol. That's a difficult, difficult cover. Hollywood well represented tonight at the Staples Center for game one of the NBA Finals in which the Lakers currently lead by six. Littered about throughout, Toby McGuire and entourage's Kevin Connolly talking strategy. Leonardo DiCaprio, a frequent visitor to Laker games. And the great Billy G. King, tennis Hall of Famer. All on hand. You know, this year has been obviously such an exciting year for the NBA, but it's also been a difficult one. Lost so many wonderful people. 
Bill Davidson and Larry Miller, two great owners, Chuck Daly, a Hall of Fame coach, recently Raymond Tisdale, and today the sad news that Randy Smith, a former All-Star guard, died of a heart attack today. Smith died while on a treadmill in Connecticut. He was a two-time All-Star, former MVP of the All-Star game. Such a durable guy, played in over 900 consecutive games, had the NBA record for so long. Died at the age of 60 today. Such sad news hearing about Randy Smith. I'm talking about a great, great player, one of the fastest players that this league has ever seen. Outstanding, watching him as a youngster with the Buffalo Braves. Touchdown pass to Bryant, but he has to come back and get it. After good defense, Derek Fisher. And it has been good defense for the Lakers. We've seen that throughout the playoffs. We've also seen some subpar performances. But tonight, they're playing some good deeds. So the one thing you recognize is they're paying attention to detail. Active, rotating, contesting. Good job of just recognizing that they have to get to the body of the shooters for the magic. This eight point lead, the largest of the first half, we're under the two minute mark. Jameer Nelson getting a lot of time. He's already played 10 minutes. Gets inside, banks it in. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's lost any rhythm at all. He's two for four from the field, four assists at a steal. And he wants a foul. He's back in arguing condition already. Doesn't take long for the NBA player to blame everything on someone else. Petrus trying to play physical with Bryant. It's not working though. Bryant also has five assists so far. Drives, kicks it out. Gasol, wide open jumper, knocks it down. You know, that's a good read. Turned down Trevor Reza, realized it was too late to get it to him at the initial denial, and then made the play for Pau Gasol. Lewis for three, won't go. Over the backboard, out of bounds. Magic three of 11 from three-point range. Coming up at halftime, Stuart Scott, John Barry, Michael Wilbon, and Magic Johnson in the building will join us for the T-Mobile halftime report. A conversation between Magic and Kobe. Guys get ready, and they'll analyze the first half. Well, and I think right now the adjustment that Rashard Lewis has to, to make is Lamar Odom is a very good defender. He's closing hard to his shot. He's going to have to put the ball on the floor and attack the basket. Howard sits down. Stan Van Gundy not wanting him to pick up that third foul. Push it to the basket inside Josh Powell. Where Tap does a good job going straight up. Well, he's played well off the bench. Bryant can't get the three. Odom's tip almost goes in. Knocked out of bounds. Still Laker ball. Odom with six rebounds and six points off the bench. And you're the magic right now with 36 seconds to go in this half. You got to make sure the Lakers don't get a two for one. They love to get Kobe Bryant curling to that baseline. Nelson apparently taking a shot in the groin. Fisher. Oh, nice play. Fisher stuck inside. Beautiful inbounds play, and it's a 10 point lead. Second layup the Lakers have gotten off the baseline out of bounds. Ball knocked off. Last touch by Nelson. No, they say Fisher touched it last, and Fisher says Danny Crawford, yes. That was a good call. <laughs> Some guy behind the shoes yells, Crawford, you stink. <laughs> Turk Lou had nine points in the first quarter. Has yet to score here in the second. Was on the bench for a while. Trying to create some space, draws the foul. Nice play from Turkaloo as Odom picks up his second. Peter Turkaloo will go to the free throw line. Turkaloo, most improved player last season in the NBA from Turkey. He's in his ninth year in the league, fifth year with Orlando. He played a lot of big playoff games with Sacramento, was more of a bit player. But now here, one of the key guys, and he's had some big shots in this postseason as well. Had a great playoff against Cleveland, averaged over 17 a game. He's actually the team leader in assists as well during the postseason. Well, his shot, game four in Philadelphia to win it at the buzzer with a three, really saved their season. He doesn't hit that. They're down 3-1, and perhaps gone long ago. Amazing in the playoffs. The difference between winning and losing. 
Orlando has a foul to give here. And there's a magical holder for the final shot. Bryant gets inside, drives on Gortat, and gets it to go. Final seconds, Nelson. And Nelson does not get the shot off in time. An impressive performance from Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. They trailed early. White Howard got off to a good start, as did the Magic. At one point, they led by five. But a huge second quarter. Kobe Bryant had 18 points. He's with Doris. Mike, he also had six assists along with those 18 points. What areas of their defense were you personally looking to exploit? I was just taking what they give me. You know, they want to back off and give me the shot. I'll, you know, I'm happy to take it. Mark Jackson talked about taking good fouls against Dwight Howard. He's been to the free throw line eight times. What did you think of what your team was doing with him? We did a pretty good job. You know, he's, he was in foul trouble too, so it's a little misleading to get eight free throws and still be in foul trouble. Um, but we'll have our work cut out for ourselves in the second half. Kobe, thank you. Mike. All right, Doris, after the break, Stewart, John, Michael, and Magic here at the Staples Center will bring you the T-Mobile Halftime Report. Magic's conversation with Kobe. First half analysis as the Lakers 8 and 2 so far in the playoffs on their home floor. A strong second quarter. And Kobe Bryant 18 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds. It's game one of the 2009 NBA Finals. The favored Lakers against the surprising Magic. And after the first two quarters, it's a 10 point LA lead. Time game one of the 2009 NBA Finals. Lakers a 10 point lead, 53 43 over the Magic. And either coach happy with certain things that happened in the first couple of quarters. One of the things that we know, they shot over 30 foul shots against us during the regular season. This is a team that's 25th in the league at shooting foul shots. And no reason to foul this team. Keep him off the line. We just got to turn up our defensive aggressiveness and alertness. We, we don't have, we're not into them. We're late on everything. Part of it is first game in a series. We're not used to what they're doing. The biggest thing, though, our defensive disposition has got to change, and it's got to change now. All right? We got to get into it. Let's go. Let's go. Stan Van Gundy not happy with the Lakers shooting 52% from the field. Part of the reason why they are up 10. Sometimes, though, when you play great defense, you still can't stop the likes of Kobe Bryant. Hi again, everyone, with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy. Mike Green on hand. Doris Burke will join us in just a moment. Sometimes Kobe is just magnificent. He did a little bit of everything in that first half, Mark. Well, he certainly did. You talk about setting the tone early, trying to get guys involved. But it, it, you talk about in game one, he looked to be aggressive offensively. Time and time again, early on, getting it going, recognizing the mismatches. Good job of facilitating getting guys wide open shots. And all of a sudden, put his foot on the gas pedal, taking advantage of the smaller Magic defenders. You talk about degree of difficulty. Well defended, contesting. This is good defense by Peter. You have done your job. Good defense, just better offense. That's why he's the best in the world. Once again, the contest, when he gets it going, he talked about it. I don't even see the defender in the picture. Took over in the first half. The numbers, 18 points, six assists, no turnovers, five rebounds. Kobe Bryant, a terrific first couple of quarters. Meanwhile, for the Orlando Magic, besides Jeff, the fact that they've got to play better defense, as your brother just said, what else do they have to do adjustment-wise? Well, they've got to rebound the ball. They got hammered on the board. So they gave up seven second shots as well as that 52% shooting. And then the Magic, like a lot of teams, they base their game around shooting. And they're not going to win shooting three from 11 from the three-point line. And Dwight Howard and Rashard Lewis both had a struggle in the first half offensively. Well, this is Michael Petrus, who was just one of six. Lewis was one of five. Meanwhile, they did get a boost from Jameer Nelson. And if you're just tuning in, Nelson had missed four months with a shoulder injury, having surgery on it. He came off the bench, first time in four months playing, played 12 minutes and played fairly well. And as the third quarter is underway here at the Staples Center, first two games of these finals here in L.A. And the series shifts to Orlando. It's a 2-3-2 format in the finals. Bryant up and under, pretty move, banks it in. 
But you see right away, Andrew Bynum coming over to set the screen. Bryant says, no, I don't want to be trapped. Let me dance one-on-one -on -one with the smaller league. Turkoglu kicks it out. Courtney Lee, wide open three. Can't get it to go. Those are the shots that are not falling right now. Pretty pass blocked by Bynum. Bynum was extremely active in the first half before he picked up his third foul. Bryant, tough shot. That's good. <laughs> he might be having one of those nights. He's got 22 already. You think about it, you're the magic perimeter defender. You come off a series of facing LeBron James and your gift. The prize is to go against Kobe Bryant. Howard against Bynum. Howard just throws it off the glass. He felt he got hit. Bryant lobs it in. Bynum running the floor. Goes back up. Can't get it to go. And Austin comes away. Turklu, extra pass. Lewis for three. That's good. And to me, that's where Orlando plays its best. When they, it's not a fast break, Mike. It's more of that semi transition where they don't allow the size of the Lakers to set. And one of the best three-point shooting teams during the regular season. They had one game this year. They hit 23 threes in one game. That's an NBA record. And as Bryant misfires that time. And the key is they have so many different players who can hurt you from downtown. Four guys on the court now. Lewis this time takes it to the basket. Wild shot. They've made some nice drives, but haven't had good finishes as we check in with Doris Burke. Mike, assistant coach Brendan Malone of the Orlando Magic said, listen, our pick and roll defense has got to be better. Kobe Bryant, if he starts to hurt us again like they did, he did in the first half, look for us to blitz him a little bit more. They talked about the 36 points in the paint. On the offensive end, they feel like the length of the Lakers is bothering Dwight Howard. They would like Raper Alston to Jeff's point a moment ago, Raper to come in and push the tempo just a bit. Guys? Well, Bynum and Gasol present problems, and they bring Odom off the floor. When the Lakers put their mind to playing defense, they can be a good defensive team. And Bynum has just picked up his fourth foul. Kobe Bryant yelling at Danny Crawford. So four on Bynum. When he's been on the floor, he's played well, but just can't stay there as Odom comes in. He's done his job. And this could have gone either way. And that's what Bryant and Bynum are talking about. Both guys very physical. Both guys trying to get to the spot. This is for all the marbles. I say allow them to bang a little bit longer. And I'm going to say this. They're getting no break with Lamar Odom coming in the game. To me, they're much better served when they've got two bigs on the floor than with Lamar Odom. Howard blocked but foul. It's the offensive rebound. He thought he got fouled on the first one. He's already taken eight free throws. And it'll go back to the line. Third foul on Odom. And you're Dwight Howard. Your job is to attack. Don't look for the referees to bail you out. That's good, hard. Basketball play by the Lakers. That's a foul. Do your job. Step up and knock down free throw. Odom's trying to say it wasn't on him that it was on Kobe Bryant. He could have called it on one of three Lakers, but that hurts LA because that's his third. Bryant doesn't have any fouls. As <laughs> Howard has that one bounce around and go in. Because now with Bynum with four and Odom with three, that's cause for concern. We think about it. Dwight Howard has the ability to get a whole team in foul trouble. And the beating he's taken throughout the year, truly really amazing. He's played as many games as he has. Shooting 70% from the line in this game, 7 of 10. He's just 1 of 6 from the field, however. 10-point Laker lead. Bryant gets inside. Gasol tips it, keeps it alive. Howard comes away. Nito Turkoglu was hot early and quiet since. Ariza stays with him. Ball deflected out, and Orlando turns it over. It's Laker ball. And that's good defense by the Lakers. That's paying attention to detail. They do a good job of surrounding Turkoglu. You're ready to close out the shooters. You have high hands. That's getting it done defensively. Lakers have had some impressive defensive performances in the playoffs. Game seven against Houston. Games five and six against Denver. Bryant to the basket. And tripped up. They're going to call it in the act of shooting. It's going to be against Courtney Lee. 
Lee's second. Again, they are attacking where Kobe Bryant has a great advantage. Size, strength, experience on Lee. And to me, Lee's stance has to be more square. And he's not, I've seen this guy defend and he's not being aggressive against Bryant. He's just back on his heels and just attack, get, you know, letting Bryant attack him. And if I'm Stan Van Gundy right now, the way that the Lakers are running their offense through Bryant, you have to make the decision to double team him and force somebody else to make a play. This is too much room one on one for Courtney Lee to defend Kobe Bryant. You're asking Courtney Lee to defend the best player in the world. Help comes late at some point for somebody else to win this ball game because Bryant is proven. How about Bryant? He's got 23 and that was his first free throw attempt. Usually gets to the line quite a bit. Knocked down a pair there. It's back up to a dozen. You know, and the dilemma is, Coach, a lot of coaches like to double-team Bryant late. Well, this game could get out of hand pretty quickly if you allow him to just continue to play one-on-one. -on -one. Well, as Yogi Berra said, gets late early. <laughs> well, the Magic have had some good comebacks in these playoffs. Lee knocks down the three-pointer. Lee's not a kid who's intimidated. I mean, he went right at LeBron James a number of times. For a rookie, he shows so much poise. But he just has a tough, tough assignment. Well, that's what I love about this kid. At times tonight, he's been exposed on a defensive end. But he's a tough kid that's proven that's not going to hold his head down. And that last, excuse me, that last play by Dwight Howard shows great improvement by him. A little, not a full double team, but a half double team. Good pass out to Lee on target with the left hand. This is a very good poised play by an improving passer out of the double team. Stan Van Gundy says he's become much more patient in terms of finding the open man. That last foul on Lee, his third, so he comes out, peaches back in, Gasol blocked, but a foul. Rashard Lewis with his third foul. You know, the personal starting to pile up a little bit. Really shows you the versatility of this Laker defense. You can go to Pau Gasol, a seven-footer. This is a mismatch. His job is to punish a smaller defender, does a good job getting to his spot. The foul on Rashad Lewis. Now Gasol back in the finals. He was looking forward to come back after subpar performance last year. Lakers losing to Boston. As we remind you, the shopNBAstore.com now for the best selection of Lakers and Magic Finals gear, including the conference championship hats and t-shirts. NBAstore.com. One store every team. Hits a pair. Lakers by 11. The concern of the Lakers, this is a dangerous Orlando Magic team. At any point, they can knock down shots and become a, a nightmare to defend. Hard screen set by Howard. Austin for three. Way short. And Odom with his seventh rebound. Now, Coach, they're getting looks. It's, it's a make or miss league. That's what you talk about all the time. Right, and especially for this team, when you're relying on the three-point shot, you need to make to stay in the game. Ariza, you kind of got the feeling it wasn't going as soon as he released it. He was hopping, hoping that it went in. Austin gets inside. Can't get it. Power the offensive board. And he's whacked. Fisher call for the foul. Two on Fisher. Well, again, good screen by Dwight Howard. And a miss layup is almost like a pass to Dwight Howard because as he rolls to the rim, there's not a perimeter player in the league, minus maybe LeBron James, who could put a body on him and stop him from getting a second shot. He has put up just tremendous numbers in this postseason, especially in the Cleveland series. Single coverage, picks it up. Austin wide open for three. And those shots just not going down right now for Orlando. Five of 16 from three-point range. But another good feed from Dwight Howard out of the post. It's inside-outside basketball. They're getting quality looks. Kobe Bryant, hit, count it, and one. 26 for Kobe Bryant and a chance for a three-point play. Well, a very good screen by Gasol, very good use of the screen by Bryant, gets to his right hand, and you couldn't see the foul there where he clipped his leg, but that is just, that's just pretty basketball by one great player. So much made of this week 
They talk about Kobe Bryant, how desperate he is for another championship. He's lost his last two finals, 2004 to Detroit, and of course last year. One in his first three trips, trying to get that fourth ring. Howard gets it deep. Offensive foul on Howard. That's his third. I don't know. I don't know if Gasol gave him room to move. You got to give credit to the bigs for the Los Angeles Lakers. Doing a great job of keeping a body on Dwight Howard. The elbow to the ribs, no question about it. Outstanding job making the call. You're right, Mark. Coming up on the midway point of the second. Bryant to Gasol. Inside, Odom. Odom hit, put it in, out of foul. And the Lakers starting to blow this one open. It's a 16-point lead. Lamar Odom has played well off the bench. Pau Gasol, one of the best passing big men in the NBA. Creating a lot of problems out of the pick and roll. Bryant takes the double team. You talk about the high low pass of Pau Gasol. Big guys that can make those plays. Not only the pass, but the ability to catch in traffic and finish. You have two guys around seven feet who are so skilled in Odom and Gasol. This is the largest lead of the game. Howard looking. Austin will try again. Ready for Austin, just two of eight from the field. But again, the play by Dwight Howard is the right play. To me, the Magic need to cut a little bit more. The soul up and under. Beautiful adjustment. And they're on their feet at the Staples Center as the Lakers have opened up an 18-point lead. Again, the Bryant pick and roll, great pocket bounce pass, late rotation by Rashard Lewis, great adjustment by Pau Gasol. Nine That's the eye points. of the tiger, Mike. <laughs>
Meanwhile, Lewis, Howard, Lee, and Petrus have three for Orlando. Oh, a key part of this ball game, the second quarter, the Magic up 33-28 with 8.30 to go in the, in the quarter. They insert Kobe Bryant back into the ball game. Since that point, it's been 40 to 18, and the Lakers have dominated. Meanwhile, see Austin at the line. Where would the Magic be without Ray for Austin after the Jameer Nelson injury? Otis Smith acquiring him from Houston. Such a big trade to get a starting point guard, and he has really helped them. He played for you in Houston. He played for your brother in Miami. Well, it really saved their season. You know, Anthony Johnson, Ty Luke, good players, but not starting type players that can eat up minutes. Ray for Alston can play big minutes. Shot clock winding down. Kobe Bryant on the drive. Gets to the basket. Oh, what a move for Kobe Bryant as the shot clock expires. He's got 29, and the Lakers back up by 18. Used every second of the shot clock there. Lewis trying to draw a foul. Barrels in, blocked by Ariza. Lakers playing some physical defense. Get the idea that this guy is trying to make a statement in game one. Mama, there goes that man. The ability to put the ball on the floor and finish at the rim. My goodness. Not only the 29 points, seven assists. And he has five rebounds as well. No turnovers. Turkaloo off the mark. And the shooting numbers continue to plummet for Orlando. Bryant again. He's got that look. He's got that game. <laughs> Serious. You know what? Everyone talks about like, look, hey, that is fundamentally sound by a great athlete. And the Magic have a different look. Orlando unraveling right now. A 20-point Laker lead led by Kobe Bryant's 31. Bryant looks up at the shot clock. Couple of fakes. Shot clock at two. He's got to put it up. Tries to bank it. Does so. And a foul. Kobe Bryant, brilliant here in the third quarter, and the Lakers up by 22. Incredible on the offensive end. Good defense, just better offense. The ability to take the hit, create your own shot, a thing of beauty. Bryant putting on a clinic. The man they call the closer, not waiting till the fourth quarter to do his damage 16 points in the period 34 for the game and the Lakers up by 23 Petrus fires away Michael Petrus nails the three and Orlando just gonna have to slowly try and chip away to get back into it and this is a team with a three-point weapon. They can get back into ball game, but it's going to have to start with getting stops. As he said, they are the ultimate bounce-back team. As Odom fell down, they're so resilient from game to game, sometimes from quarter to quarter. They never get down. Nelson blocked by Gasol. Picked up by Bryant. Turkaloo looks to stop him. Hard foul. Smart play by Turkaloo, and Bryant will go to the line. And we'll have a timeout. The brilliance of Kobe Bryant on display here in game one. Well, here he goes. He just goes into a multiple move. Back and in. Good defense. Spins by him. Re-clutches. Bank. And one. Wow. He looks mean. <laughs> Time for tonight's edition of Gatorade Cooler Talk. Who do you think we're talking about? Talking about the Orlando Magic. Good reads on the offensive end. The attention paid to Dwight Howard does a good job of kicking out. Is a make a miss lead, says Coach Jeff Van Gundy. You're getting wide open looks. Missed the jumper. How about an easy lay off the pick and roll? Once again, don't settle for the jumper. 
sells the pump fake, gets in the scene time and time again. These are quality looks for the Orlando Magic. The reason that this team is in the finals, their ability to make these shots. So far tonight in game one, shooting 30% from the field. Chuck Lou, one of the few early that had it going. You see the three-point shooting. Now, six of 18 is not bad, 33%. But overall shooting is just 31%. And again, Brian pouring on the points, and it's only his fifth free throw. You know how they say one man can't beat a team? I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> one man can beat a team. This guy has dominated each offensive possession. Think about it. Go back to any possession in this game. Can you name where he was not involved where it turned out to be a positive? Whether he's, a, you want to call it being on fire in the zone as the look. He's unstoppable when he's playing like this. And he's got 36, which is the most he's scored in a finals game. Turkaloo. Shot won't go. Bryant, his seventh rebound. He's on the way to a triple-double. He had a triple-double against the Magic during the regular season. Finds Ariza. Ariza, open three. Bang! 25-point lead for the Lakers. But once again, it's off of the play of Bryant. Taking double teams and making every right decision. And that's the eighth assist for Kobe Bryant. Howard down low, got whacked. Although Bryant felt he had a clean play on it. And see who they call the foul on. His first foul for Kobe. Goes away from the pick and roll. Turkaloo rotates to the body of Pal Gasol, leaving Ariza wide open. Bryant, the skip pass on point. This is the third straight impressive game for the Lakers. Again, go back to the conference finals. Playing against Denver, they lost by 19 in game four. As Howard misses that. Then came back an impressive win in game five. Closed out the series game six. And maybe their best all-around performance of the playoffs. And they followed up with a superb effort here in game one so far. I know it's still the third quarter. But they are in complete control. Are just nine points only one of six from the field again you guys talked about this at the top the length of the Lakers really makes a difference especially when Bynum's out there playing and Gasol and Odom it's one factor when he catches it they can give help without a full-blown double team but it's also a factor when they're trying to get the ball into him right there they had him on a high low but Richard Lewis couldn't see over the size of Lamar Odom Shot clock down to five. Bryant, that's a two-pointer. Too strong. Ariza flying in for the rebound. That's just a soft play by Courtney Lee. You yeah. got to hit him on the on the way to the rim like that. Ball deflected. Howard got a piece of it. Lee coming the other way. Finds Petrus. Odom doing a good job fronting. Then behind, trying to mix it up. On Howard. Laker defense on Howard has been just terrific. Lee jump shot. That one in and out. And Odom hauls in his 10th rebound of the game. Plus eight in the rebounding for the Lakers. Inside. Off the mark. The soul right there to clean it up. Now the largest lead as Petrus gets to the basket. A rare time where Lakers didn't defend in the paint. Final seconds of what has been a dominant third quarter for Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. Bryant to drive, puts it up. And that ends the third period. 18 points. In the third quarter, 36 for the game to go along with eight assists and seven rebounds. As the Lakers outscore the Magic 29 to 15 here in the third quarter. This presentation of the NBA Finals on ABC will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Los Angeles with Phil Jackson. Coach, when you see Kobe playing,
playing at this level of effectiveness and with this much determination. What are you thinking on the bench? Don't go to it too many times. You know, yeah, ride that while it's warm, but I mean, you know, I think we carried a little bit too long there. I kept encouraging the other guys to get involved and to move the ball a little bit at the end. We had a great run, didn't he? Sure did, coach. Defensively, 31% shooting by the Magic. What are you doing well defensively? Yo, know, we've kept them off balance in this quarter. They're, they're, you know, they hit a couple threes, Lewis and uh, Peaches hit a couple threes, but we kept them from inside and kept the ball on the outside of the floor. Mike. All right, Doris. Phil Jackson has certainly watched this year of those so-called great runs by a player. Doris with Michael Jordan in the six championships, three with Kobe Bryant. You can talk about X factors and tangibles, keys to victory. When he plays like this, you simply can't beat them. Lewis flips it up. That one halfway down wouldn't go. Well, Phil Jackson said he, his thoughts are don't go to him. Are you kidding me? If I'm coaching, I'm saying ride him and look at me, coach. I think both coaches would hope that they wouldn't go to him. I think Stan would be all for that. Hey, I agree. Get Luke Walton involved. <laughs> Foul on the entry pass. It goes against Rashard Lewis. You know, this game to me has highlighted just how very good Lamar Odom is. You know, it's not just his rebounding. It's his defensive play, his ability to post, move the ball. The guy is just an outstanding player. Luke Walton gets fouled on a nice pass from Gasol. Reminder fans, polls are still open for tonight's finals player of the game voting presented by T-Mobile. Text the last name of your choice for the player of the game to 69622 from any wireless phone now. Voting closes at the end of the game. Standard texting rates. No, no, apply. no. Voting is already closed, okay? <laughs> Can we just close the voting? I mean, I know we got to read that. Hey, it was that, who was that? What was that phone company? Uh, T-Mobile, great. Great company. The voting is close. <laughs> Kobe Bryant, okay? Lewis grabs the rebound off the miss. And Jameer Nelson getting his first playing time in four months. Knocks it down. He's played now 17 minutes, six points, four assists. And his team down by 23, opening minute here of the fourth. I love Stan Van Gundy. The one bright spot is Jameer Nelson. He has certainly shown tonight that he can be a factor the rest of the way in this series. Shannon Brown seeing his first minutes. Stolen by Lee, stolen back by Farmer. Shot clock did not reset. He never had possession. Farmer's going to have to put it up. Just gets it off in time. Won't go. And Gore top the rebound. Nelson looking. Stolen by Walton. Laker defense continues to be impressive. Alley oop. And Nelson's smart play bangs into. Shannon Brown to prevent the alley-oop dunk. Nice sportsmanship after twice checks to make sure he's okay. And the good thing with that play is Jameer Nelson makes the contact prior to Shannon Brown getting in the air. Walton floats it up to Gasol. How Gasol looks and drops it in. 14 points for Pau Gasol. Beatrice. And Walton inadvertently bumps into him, picks up his first, first team foul for the Lakers. Phil Jackson looking for his 10th NBA championship. He's lost his last two finals. And currently tied with late Red Auerbach. Nelson misfires. You know, I would say this, though. I believe this about Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant doesn't need to win a championship to prove how great he is, and neither does Phil Jackson. You know, this idea that, you know, Kobe Bryant needs this to prove he can win without O'Neal, everybody needs everybody in this league. Oh, I'm counted and a foul. Lakers pouring it on. The lead balloons to 27. Ball movement and man movement. Outstanding job getting into the seams, making the extra pass. Farmer finds Odom, the ability to finish in traffic, and then Bryant celebrating on the sideline. And both guys, the thing you just talked about, Jeff, they scoff at that. Phil Jackson well, obviously would like to win 
another championship, but not necessarily to get the 10th one. He just, he likes winning. Same thing Kobe Bryant. Not to win because win one without Shaquille O'Neal. They just both like to win. Right, they're in the present moment. I mean, this guy's had an unbelievable career, both of them. As Jameer Nelson misses, but I think sometimes that gets carried away. Phil Jackson isn't arguably the best coach in the NBA because of the nine or 10 championships. Because the guy can really coach. Down and Brown, jump shot. Too strong. Ball batted around. There have been so many close games throughout these playoffs. You've got the good old fashioned blowout right now in game one of the finals. What an impressive performance from the Lakers. Petrus foul, banks it in as he falls down. And he'll shoot a free throw after the timeout. But it's all Lakers. Kobe Bryant, 36 points, eight assists, seven rebounds. The Lakers dominating. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Finals, Stan Van Gundy trying to keep his team alert and alive despite being down by 26. Right now, going forward in this game and in this series, we better find a heart defensively. And right now, we got to get our heads back in because we're playing total frustration. Biggest thing right now is we got to find our game, okay? That's not how we play. Get your heads up. We're a lot better than this. It's a long series. Good advice, and one of the reasons the team has always been able to bounce back, as we keep saying, they're such a resilient team. Right now, their body language is not good, and you obviously saw that. Well, that's great advice. You want to coach your team and remind them that it's not a one-game series, that you are better than this, and the idea is the next possession. Let's get better, and let's put ourselves in position to win a series. And they open up the playoffs by losing game one at home to Philadelphia. We're down two to one in that series as Odom misfires. Rebound Bynum, back up, bank shot no good, but a foul. Well, you look at this Laker team tonight, and I can't point to one guy that has played bad. From beginning to end, everybody has fulfilled their role. They paid attention to details on the defensive end, and this is when the Lakers are clearly the best team in basketball. And you have to give their coaching staff and the players a lot of credit. A week off could have, you know, found their way out of rhythm versus the ability to stay in rhythm, and they played a superior game. They actually felt they really needed the break again they had two hard series seven games against houston six games against denver even kobe bryant who rarely admits being tired said he was tired during that denver nugget series so they could have used the break obviously very refreshed here tonight still over eight minutes remaining in orlando is stan van gundy said find their game down the stretch here at least get them back playing well Farmar, Shannon Brown, Luke Walton, Odom, and Bynum out there right now. Bynum the only starter. Shot clock down to seven. Austin bellies up on Farmer, spins past him. Bank shot won't go. And Howard with his 11th rebound. Been averaging over 15 rebounds a game in the playoffs. Turkaloo draws the foul. Nearly puts it in. As we check in with Doris. Guys, it seems like we've got a special edition Kobe Bryant for the finals. Nike put out a special shoe, the Kobe Bryant Nike Zoom 4 special edition for the finals. 61 points at the Garden, stats all over it to commemorate it. But we thought we'd show you that one, Mike. This probably brought you to tears that night at MSG. Well, <laughs> it's working, whatever it is, Doris. As he has just been brilliant, 36 points in 33 minutes. How about I was reading that? Beatrice was actually going to wear the Kobe sneakers. And they decided not to. He's doing something different tonight, though, Michael Petrus. He has written on his sneakers AF447, which is for Air France Flight 447, a tribute to the passengers on that Air France flight that was lost over the Atlantic. Such a tragedy. And Pierce, or Petrus, who is from France, with a nice gesture. Right now, the Lakers.
Lakers up by 25, seven and a half minutes remaining. J.J. Redick has come on for Orlando. Pass inside, stolen by Redick. Throws it ahead to Austin. Austin looking for an opening. Ball batted out of bounds. Imagine if the Orlando Magic never saw a Western Conference game and they came out of the Eastern Conference defending LeBron James and somebody said to them, the guy that you're facing in the next round, some say, is better than the guy that you just eliminated. They would think that you were crazy. <laughs> Especially the numbers LeBron James put up. Kobe Bryant off to a great start. Well, how about you, Mark, you bring it up. How about that idea? Kobe Bryant talked about this yesterday, about the familiarity of playing in the finals because you only see the teams twice. Granted, you know players throughout the league as Turkaloo misses. But is it a big difference when you only see a team twice during the season as opposed to the four of your Western Conference foes? I really don't think it's a difference at all, especially when, you, you know, this is 2009, when you actually could have a, a league pass and watch every game. So it's no secret what the Magic were going to do in order to be successful in this, in this series. Turkaloo. Big third quarter turn this one around. The 10 point game at halftime as Howard is fouled. He'll go back to the line. And yes, the Lakers have played good defense, but they have been absolutely led by Kobe Bryant. Whereas the big guns for Orlando have struggled big time tonight. See, I've always felt that Phil Jackson's teams always did a very good job defending low post presence because he usually builds a, a team that has great length and the length makes it hard when you're going across the middle to get a great look at the rim as mark said many times what gives him the most problems is the pick and roll and the magic he usually found a way to involve dwight howard after the ball moves of getting deep post catches not the case here tonight because of the length of the lakers and i think ultimately just like boxing styles makes fights and if you look at dwight howard phil jackson is not concerned about dwight howard winning four games in this series it's going to be the pick and roll and the perimeter guys that's the recipe for disaster for the magic to win right as far as that one rebound from howard well i think jj reddick is clearly the kobe stopper <laughs> J.J. Redick, the former All-America from Duke, who struggled early in his career, finally had a nice season this year. He was a contributor to Orlando's 59-win season. Nice pass inside. Gortat blocked from behind. Terrific defensive play. And here comes Bryan. On the move. Bang shot. Won't go. And Gortat saves it. And past the midway point of the fourth quarter. Howard running the floor. And you can tell when that one doesn't work, nothing going Orlando's way. 30% shooting from the field. Turkaloo rushed it. They're now 6 of 21 from three-point range. But right there, their passing was all off. You know, they had guys open, but the passes were poorly thrown. Odom. Turkaloo lost it out of bounds. We'll have a timeout. Game one, all Lakers. Kobe Bryant still not satisfied, wanted some more calls. Pau Gasol has been strong. The Laker defense terrific. And Kobe Bryant unstoppable. All part of a 24-point LA lead. Back in Los Angeles, game one of the 2009 NBA Finals. Staples Center dominated by Kobe Bryant. He's the subject of our Coors Light cold, hard look. What a performance from Bryant. Talking about a cold, hard look. How about a cold, hard stare? Right from the opening tap, Kobe Bryant had the look on a mission. Getting guys involved and then turn back time. Talking to guys on the bench. Excited after plays. The attitude, the approach, the mentality became contagious. And the Lakers from the jump meant business. Bryant stays in the game. Got four starters and Luke Walton still out there in Fanlet. Gortat and Howard on the floor at the same time for Orlando. Austin can't get it to go. Two for nine for Austin. 
And Orlando shooting has just been awful. 29%. Part of that due to the Laker defense. Part of it, they've missed open shots. And Bynum can't get it to go. No, you have to give credit to the Laker defense. They're getting, giving up the shots that they want to be given up. And yet, Orlando's going to have to make some of those same shots if they want to bounce back and make this any sort of series. Shot clock winding down. Turkoglu with some trouble. Ball deflected. It's only their eighth turnover. And all the other numbers doesn't matter as Brian is fouled. He'll go back to the free throw line with 4.14 remaining. The series will continue on Sunday on ABC. Right back here at the Staples Center. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern. An earlier start on Sunday night. Tip off shortly after 8, Game 2. And then it will shift to Orlando for Game 3 on Tuesday. That's a 9 Eastern start. Game 4 Thursday in Orlando, also 9 Eastern. And then a Game 5 also in Orlando, which would be next Sunday if necessary. Well, if you're a Magic fan and you're thinking, man, my team's getting whacked. It's happened before in the finals. Of course, the most famous blowout in game one of the finals was back in 85 where the Celtics beat the Lakers by 34. They called it the Memorial Day Massacre. Lakers losing by 34, but they came back and won that series in six games. Yeah, but they had three Hall of Famers. Yes, they, <laughs> yes, they did. And a, a slew of other really good players. But as we continue to say, Orlando's the team that's bounced back before. And that's some crushing losses, but those were last second losses. And they lost four times during these playoffs in a shot in the final seconds. Uh, this is a shellacking. No, this is the good news for Stan Van Gundy. He understands he has a team that's not going to quit. They will get better. The sole high floater. Not huge numbers for Gasol, but a very effective performance. 16 points, 7 boards, and 3 assists. Largest lead has been 28. Petrus blocked by Gasol. Petrus gets it back. Shot clock at 5. Petrus has really struggled. So good in the Cleveland series, gets that to go. As we come up on 3 minutes remaining. And sometimes you have to just take your lump on a certain day and try to figure out a plan. And the plan is going to have to center around how can they rebound in the pick and roll game of Kobe Bryant. The rebounding numbers plus 12 for the Lakers. And Bryant just had his way when he had that 18 point third quarter. The Saul misses, tipped in by Walton. Ultimately, rebounding, you have to do it as a team. And then defensively, you have to make a decision. What are we willing to give up? And what are we going to take from the Lakers? And again, Orlando's been a good road team all season. They won here earlier in the regular season as Reddick knocks down the three. You know, I'm going to tell you, I've always been impressed with J.J. Reddick's readiness. And I know it means nothing here in garbage time. But this guy is ready to play. He didn't play in six, uh, five of the six games against Cleveland after starting all seven games against Boston. He's in a different role than he, when he was a star at college, and he's adjusted well to it. Bryant now with 40 points, most he's ever scored in a finals game. That shot blocked. And yeah, we'll have timeout. Under two minutes remaining and a Laker blowout. Well, it's the length of the Lakers' front line here playing with Bynum. Great basket protection by Gasol with the block. And then, hey, this is his second face-up jumper. If he's going to make that, he's an awfully hard cover. A dominant performance from the Los Angeles Lakers in game one of the finals, 97-73. In front of a sold-out Staples Center, and many of Hollywood's finest on hand, David Arquette, sitting courtside, along with Fordham's Denzel Washington, Andy Garcia, a huge Laker fan, 
And Lisa Leslie getting ready to play her final WNBA season with the LA Sparks. One of the all time great women's players. As Howard will go to the line. By the way, Kobe Bryant now, a 40 point game. That's the 46th 40 point game in NBA Finals history. Lakers have 26 of the 46. And it's Kobe's first. And the most impressive thing, you know, he offensively had an outstanding night. But you talk about eight rebounds and eight assists. He did everything to set up this Laker team in game one. And you think about it, he doesn't really ever have to guard a primary option. So all of his energy can be saved for the offensive end because whether it's Courtney Lee or Beatrice, it's not like they're going to those players because their best three players are at different positions. Shot clock at two. Vujicic is going to have to put it up. Throws up the three. Won't go. And Howard the rebound. Under a minute and a half remaining. 15 rebounds for Howard, but he had a rough night. Reddick gets inside. Pretty move. Can't finish. Josh Powell the board. If you're Orlando now, you probably don't want, or maybe you do, Jeff, that extra day with game two not coming till Sunday, an extra day to work on some things, or is it an extra day to think about the shellacking? Well, I, no, I think you have to, hey, when you're outclassed like this tonight, you're going to go back, look at the tape, see what you did wrong, and you want the two days to try to regroup, re-energize, and get a better plan. Here's our Verizon wireless game track. Again, it was just a 10-point game at halftime. Quickly, it came to nine early in the third, and then Kobe Bryant exploded at 18 points in that third quarter and blew it open in the third period. And Mike, this is a scoring team, Orlando. So to go 19, 15, and now it's 17 in the fourth quarter, there's no chance unless they're going to score up in the mid-90s that they're going to have a chance to hang with a very explosive L.A. Lakers offense. And again, they got to the free throw line. 29 times hitting 21 of them but it's the shooting percentage just 30 percent from the field and all five starters really struggled Howard one for six Lewis two for ten Turkley three for eleven Alston two for nine John Brown DJ Benga in there he's gonna throw it up as the shot clock expires and a 24 second violation So the Lakers turn in their third straight impressive performance again games five and six in Denver to wrap up that series. They had some uneven performances earlier in the playoffs especially against Houston. People were starting to question whether they were championship material. Kobe Bryant kept saying as did other players that it was the type of tough games and resiliency needing to them to toughen them up for the finals to win a championship. Well it looks like he may be right. Shot clock and game clock nearly identical as the Laker fans get on their feet. And rightfully so, applauding an outstanding performance from their team. Powell hits the three. And that'll do it. The Lakers take game one of the 2009 finals. Bill Jackson always has the edge when his team wins game one. And his team was dominant. Kobe Bryant, a brilliant performance. 40 points, highest he's ever had in a finals game. And a long night for Dwight Howard. Just one of six from the field. As the Laker length certainly hurt. Let's check in with Doris. Thanks, Mike, with Kobe Bryant. You had some separation from Orlando at the half, but you blew it open in the third. How? So we wanted to come out and keep our energy up. You know, we played them in the regular season. We started the third quarters when they got back in the game and took over the game. So we wanted to come out with a lot of energy. Yesterday, your mind was all business. You were very clipped in your responses. Third period, you really got to work. Where were you attacking them? Well, I wanted to make sure that we stayed on the aggressive. And uh, you know, it's my responsibility in those moments of the game to keep us going. Dwight Howard has been consistent for us throughout the course of these playoffs. Tonight, just 12 points. What did you guys do that bothered him? Well, we did a good job on him. Uh, but, you know, he'll be ready to go in game two. What defensively specifically do you think got to him with Powell and Lamar and Andrew bothering him? Well, you know, we worked very hard on the perimeter, you know, keeping those guys, uh, you know, out of rhythm. 
And then when he was down low, we did a pretty good job circling them, giving them different looks. Kobe, thanks. Good luck in game two. Thank you. Mike. Doris, Kobe Bryant in the Laker defense. He threw in 40. No surprise, our T-Mobile player of the game. Okay. Plus the Laker defense, excellent. Holding the Orlando Magic to 29% shooting from the field. And the Lakers gain the edge here in these finals. Bryant took over the game in the third quarter when he had 18 points, did a little bit of everything. As Lakers jump out on top, we'll be back after this timeout.